All right, so we're going to take a look at chapter three and its big ideas. This is going to be the British Atlantic world. We're going to look at 1660 to 1750 in this quick video. All right, so just a couple of things. So remember that New York is going to be established. All right, and um, what's going to happen as well as the Carolinas. So Charles II is going to give the Carolinas to his friend. Okay, and then uh, the Dutch colony, which remember it used to be New Amsterdam, it's now New York, he's going to give to his brother James. So this is kind of how colonies were working in some aspect. If they were a royal colony, it was, who are my friends? Who do I want to give this to? And that's how the king worked. Um, the Carolinas, all right, were, they established um, the Church of England, all right, and they had kind of the manorial system like we talked about last chapter from England, they brought that over. So poor, th poor North Carolina families, they worked really hard to resist all of the taxation, okay, because they're going to get taxed. Of course, the wealthy always like to tax the poor. That's how um, countries work. So uh, the South Carolinas also are going to establish a slave society, and they're going to bring in their slaves from uh, Barbados. Remember that the Carolinas are going to be really big for rice, all right, um, and different grains. Okay, so Pennsylvania is going to be established during this time. This is going to be William Penn, okay? Um, he's going to be a Quaker, all right, a pacifist. He's going to believe that the inner light of grace and salvation anybody can obtain, all right? Um, and he's going to guarantee religious freedom for all Christians. So this is kind of a really big deal. Um, actual religious freedom and acceptance is not something known throughout the world at this time. He's also going to um, allow property owning men to vote. So you did have to be a man and you did have to own property in Pennsylvania. Um, they were one of the more open and democratic of the colonies. So something to take into consideration and remember. This is just an image that you remember that Pennsylvania and New York, New Jersey and Delaware are all considered part of the middle colonies. New England, you can see up at the top, um, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, that's going to be your New England colonies. Okay, so these middle colonies, and notice how large uh, New York is. Uh, we don't have Maine yet, so that's why it's so big. All right, so eventually um, what's going to happen is the colonies are going to um, kind of ebb and flow with how the uh, empire looks at them. So sometimes the king will be really focused on the colonies and demand total control. And other times the king is going to be occupied with other wars and things going on in his own country. Okay. So during this time period, all right, um, we are going to have the navigation acts and these um, acts are going to be passed by parliament. And it's pretty much going to tell the colonies, you can only trade with Britain. You can only go through Britain. There are no other options, but Britain. This is also going to be the time that we're going to establish the Dominion of New England. All right, this is going to be where we, the king comes in and he's going to bring and unite all of these different colonies. This is going to make them one dominion. Okay, it's like a mega colony. It's going to last for three years. All right, because you got to remember that these colonists by this point are identifying as certain um, regional uh, colonies. So they're like, they're Connecticut uh, person. They're a Rhode Island person. So to be jammed all together is a little difficult. Plus they all have their own governments. They all have their own systems. They all have their own way of life. So they're not happy. So needless to say, this is only going to last three years. Um, also the king's going to get pretty preoccupied again uh, doing some other things. So um, again, the Navigation Acts, you really need to know them. They're on page 85 of your textbook. All right. They're the 1650s. They're going to regulate old trade. All right, then we're going to have the Revenue Act of 1673. This is going to be passed so that there is a duty on all sugar and tobacco exports. Uh, so that's going to kind of hit the colonists. All right, and then the Dutch are going to be driven out, um, ending their supremacy in the slave trade, and Britain is going to take over for that. Just a quick review of the Dominion of New England. You definitely have to know it. James II wanted stricter control, centralized imperial system. All right. Later, New York and New Jersey were going to be added. It was just a huge mega colony, and it had huge um, problems that went with it. So it just it did not work out. Um, the governor is going to abolish legislative assemblies. So Connecticut, Rhode Island, all these people who had legislative assemblies, he's going to wipe them out and um, 
and close them down. And he's going to mandate that everybody worship at the Church of England. This is not going to make people happy. Okay, so uh, this isn't going to go over well. This is partly why it does not last. All right, the other part why it doesn't last is because the glorious revolution is happening. So over in England, they're a little busy. Okay, we have the Catholic v. Protestant um, future. Uh, we've got the bloodless um, coup that's going to happen with William and Mary taking over. Uh, and so the uh, mother country is going to be a little preoccupied. So these navigation acts are going to come. The dominion is going to happen. And then it's going to all just kind of fade away into the background because England's going to be busy with their own thing. The different rebellions that are going to happen in America during this time that are going to help propagate this separation uh, is going to be that the governor of the Dominion of New England is going to be shipped back to England. All right. It's going to be broken up. There's going to be um, religious freedom granted in Massachusetts. So remember, we were, in Massachusetts, we're going to go from the Puritans, okay, who did the Salem witch trials, who persecuted Anne Hutchinson and William Penn and Roger Williams and kicked them all out of the colonies. They're now actually going to open up to being a little bit more uh, religious um, tolerance. And then in New York, we're going to have a rebellion by Leisler. He's going to rebel against the throne. Um, eventually, he's going to be um, executed. But uh, just showing that it's really hard for the mother country to, to keep control of what's going on in the colonies during this time. So also during this time, obviously, the Enlightenment is happening. All right. So this is going to be a huge influence on us later. Uh, when we get into the revolution. This is just an example of the number of royal colonies to proprietary colonies to the corporate colonies, okay? So definitely pay attention to who was who, where was where, and what was what. This is an illustration of the number of Africans that were arriving alive in the Americas, right, in Europe. So um, you can notice that Portugal and Brazil um, they're moving most of the slaves during this time, all right, whereas Dutch America is still small and British North America is super small, so. All right, so the South Atlantic system, okay, so this is going to be, again, all right, the slave system, this is going to be picking them up from West Africa, bringing them over to the Caribbean, the Barbados, all right, to the sugar plantations. That's going to be the way station, so they're going to pause there. All right, they'll sell off their first batch, and then they'll move on up the coast of the Americas and do more sales. Of course, during this time, we're going to have something called slave codes because you need to control all right, um, your slave population. So uh, these are going to be established in the different Caribbean and different uh, colonies in order to control the slaves as they're coming in. This is just something to take a look at the different numbers of the amount of slaves that are leaving um, Africa. So uh, the numbers are in the millions that they're sailing off and they're going to the different um, locations down in South America, up in the Caribbean, all right, and then on the coast of the British North American colonies. This is an example of slavery in the Chesapeake and the South Carolina region and the uh, increase in numbers. So you can see how the black population is skyrocketing, whereas whites do have a um, direct increase, uh, the blacks still outnumber them. Just because we're taking them from Africa, and we're enslaving them does not mean that they are not creating their own cultures and communities. They're coming together, all right, all of these different um, ethnic groups from Africa, they're figuring out new languages, all right, they're learning from each other, and they're creating all of these uh, new cultures here in America, which is going to benefit us later on musically uh, and with food. One of the big things to know is that rice and the cultivation of rice came from Africans, so South Carolina's number one crop came from watching what the slaves were producing on their day off. And then the South Carolinian plantations began to incorporate that. And that became one of their huge crops uh, was, was rice. There's definitely going to be resistance. Okay, nobody wants to be enslaved. So we're going to have different rebellions. You definitely need to know about the Stono Rebellion. So uh, take a look at that. But the idea is... These people are going to uh, 
either rebel on the ships coming over. There were some of those, all right? They're gonna rebel by not working, working slower, breaking tools, um, feigning sickness. Um, they're going to have a sense of autonomy still as much as they possibly can under these horrible conditions of slavery, okay? So they are still human and they are still going to rebel in the ways that they possibly can. Oftentimes an actual rebellion that comes together and um, tries to run away in mass numbers from slavery, it, when they are caught, they are punished and oftentimes tortured and killed. Slavery was this mix, okay? So they're, um, the masters definitely treated the male slaves one way and many of the female slaves another way. Keep that in mind as we move through the year. We're going to have something called the rise of the southern gentry. So this begins kind of that idea of the planter aristocrats, all right, the esteemed um, plantation uh, owner, the slave owner. Um, oftentimes we will um, eventually move into the benevolent slave owner, the supposedly kind slave owner. Um, but this is where the big plantation image comes in and is created during this, this time period. So take note of that, that it begins here. So just an example of the economy that's going on. So you can notice that coming from Britain are manufactured goods and coming from Boston to Britain are the raw goods of tobacco, indigo, um, flour, and lumber. Okay. Fish, rice is coming from Spain. All right. Um, and then manufactured goods are all coming from uh, the mother countries. So something to just take uh, into consideration. We're getting the raw goods, we're shipping them to the mother country, they're creating the final goods, and then they're shipping them back to us so that we can buy them. Sal salutary neglect is a big deal. So once the navigation acts kind of fade away, all right, and the um, glorious revolution is happening in Britain, we're going to kind of get back into our own world where we're going to be able to have our colonial assemblies, our legislative systems, we're going to be governing ourselves, all right, and we're going to kind of be making our own decisions economically as well again, okay? So remember that there's this back and forth tension that keeps going on from the establishing of the colonies all the way through to the revolution of we get a little bit um, of control and then we take control back. <laughs> 